Well, this week we have seen signs of cooling in our housing market. Prices trending lower in April with a notable sales slump as interest rates climb. In the words of a new BMO report, demand fever in Canada's housing market has broken. Robert Kavsik is a senior economist with BMO Capital Markets and he joins us now. Robert, always nice to see you. What would you say about what you're seeing when it comes to demand for housing right now? Well, we, we saw the brakes get hit almost immediately after the Bank of Canada started to move on interest rates. And I, I think what you've seen is we've we've clearly come out of this environment where um, investors and home buyers were used to one and a half percent mortgage rates and this concept of of interest rates never rising to now one where we have seen the bank move and the bank is telling us they're going to continue to move perhaps aggressively we think they will uh, and the psychology in the market has has just completely changed overnight. And we did just show a graphic highlighting what is happening, whether it is on the sales front where the numbers were noticeably down in April, but also starting to see that weakness in prices. Can you give us your forecast on what's going to happen to pricing over the course of the year? Well, it's 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 going to depend quite a bit on first and foremost how aggressive the Bank of Canada can actually be. So we think they're going to raise rates another 125 basis points through the rest of 2022. Uh, and in that environment, we're probably gonna be looking at mortgage rates across the curve from variable to fixed, averaging you know, somewhere around 4%. Uh, and that's gonna be a, a big pill for a market to swallow that was pretty extended in terms of prices and was priced at about 1.5% mortgage rates through the pandemic. So, I mean, very easily you could see 10 to 20% come off some markets. We've already probably seen that in a few instances. But it's not going to be uniform across subsectors. It's not going to be uniform across the country as well. Let's dive deeper into that part. During the pandemic, when housing was red hot and a lot of people were looking for more space, maybe they were moving out of the city to the suburban area, you did see even uh, more elevation in prices because of that trend. So what are, can you give us a little more color on the kinds of markets you're going to be watching for when it comes to that price um, pressure? Sure. Well, I'll start with the with the with the strong spots. I think the core of the major cities are already showing signs of holding up relatively well as we get a little bit of a migration back in to the to the big cities. And Toronto is an example where the condo market still looks pretty solid. The detached market in the core of the city looks pretty solid. Uh, markets like Alberta, as an example, which which as we as you got to remember went through a, a you know six year period where prices fell and then consolidated before the pandemic that market actually still looks relatively attractive on a valuation basis so they might not get hit all that much at all but as you spill out to kind of the suburbs and the exurbs of some of the bigger cities um, southwestern ontario for example those are markets that saw 50 to 100 percent price gains through the course of the pandemic and those are areas where i, I suspect we probably saw the most froth and where that froth is probably going to get cleaned out quickest. And so when it comes to the issue of housing affordability, obviously when it comes to, you know, big elections like the federal one in this country, there was so much focus on that. There wasn't as much talk on the campaign trail about things like interest rates. There was sort of a, a pushing away of the subject of monetary policy. But as rates go up, even if you see that cooling in prices, what does that mean for the math on affordability? Well, I mean, it doesn't do all that much, does it? If you if you're paying four percent later this year instead of one and a half, if prices come off twenty percent, that effectively cancels itself out, right? So, from an affordability basis, that's just the market adjusting to to higher rates. It's not necessarily making housing cheap. Uh, on that perspective, I think you know one of the big reasons why we probably will see a floor put under this market, uh, maybe later this year, maybe early in 2023, at some point, is that. We do still have tremendous demographic demand from the millennials and from international immigration. We do still have a very strong, very tight job market that is ultimately at the end of the day what does support housing. And we still have uh, uh, an, an overall environment where inflation and building costs are running at a, at a very strong clip. So at some point, um, as, as, as resale price is correct, they are going to find a floor because of, because of those factors. And from an affordability perspective, I mean, it's, it's just still a challenging environment from this point going forward. Yeah, I mean, you hit on some of what I was going to ask you, but just to try to get a sense on whether Canada can handle these higher rates and what that ultimately means for the housing market, which so many Canadians are deeply invested in at this um, stage of the game. We're talking about sentiment within the markets, for example, right now, which is soured a lot. I wonder what the Canadian consumer sentiment feels like if this uh, if this housing 
um, concern, mortgage costs, coupled with the inflation story, are kind of alive and well right now. So, so that's kind of how we have to differentiate this. We talked about some of those fundamentals on the cost side, on the demographic side, the labor market side. Those are solid, and I think they will remain supportive. What we're talking about here when we're looking at a price correction in housing is just cleaning out the froth that built up through probably the second half of the pandemic. And some of the price growth we saw across some of these some of these markets, especially outside the core of the cities, is probably permanent. Some of it is is froth, and and that's what interest rates are going to clean out. Um, it's and it's not really all that unlike what we're seeing in the equity market right now as well, where where the market started to price in more aggressive Fed tightening, and we're just cleaning up valuation froth and finding a new level in a in a in a new more uh, more longer term, more sustainable interest rate world. And I think you might very well see the same thing happen in housing. Well, that's actually an interesting way to put it. Makes a lot of sense. Robert, thanks for your time. Appreciate you breaking it down for us. Robert Kafsik, Senior Economist with BMO Capital Markets on the housing story.